せーのでは三段ちゃん食べもう三段ちゃんほら心はしかすにょもっともっと,もっと Welcome back to the channel We are going to give you guys our review of, well, recap, I should say, of Agents of Steel Season 2. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this was around the time that Agent Carter joined in to the lineup. Um, short lived show, though, it was, even though I actually really enjoyed it. So I believe we get to. Or maybe it sprung out from this because、mm-hmm. the first episode of season two has them dealing with the, obulet, the、um, obelisk. I think、okay. I'm pronouncing that right.、Mm. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is because the obelisk, in the very beginning, when you see it, is one of the、um, unmentionables, if you will, that、um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. brought back. Um, from Hydra all the way back in what was that, like 1945? So、mm-hmm. basically, Captain America, the、um, first Avenger from that movie. And they've been holding on to these different things. The reason why the o b e l i s k is so important is because it plays a very big role in everything that happens in, in season, season two. We don't know it. Like, we know it's going to be, you know, when they always zoom in on something, we know it's going to be significant. Sin- we、yeah. did not know, at least I didn't know, how, how significant it was going to be. Okay, so basically,、um, we meet a couple of players here. We meet Xena.、Um, well, she's not Xena in this role. She's,、um, what's her name? I can't remember her name, but、mm-hmm. we meet her team. And it's Xena, a warrior princess, in her new role. We meet、um, Lance Hunter. We meet Mac,、um, aka Big Sexy.、Um, who else do we meet on the team? What was the other guy's name?、Hmm. He dies pretty early. I can't remember his What name. What does he look like? He was pretty,、um, he was brown skin. Are you talking about the one that、um, ends up in a relationship with him? This guy? No. Oh, I don't know. No.、Um, oh, yeah, BJ's there. That's what I was、yeah. going to ask you.、Yeah. Um, BJ is、um, the second,、um, I forgot this, specialist. Specialists are the role that Grant Ward and,、um, and Agent May and BJ play. They're like basically the best fighters that come out of、um, S.H.I.E.L.D. as they go through their different levels. All right, so getting back to the nitty gritty, they, they're going on the hunt for the obelisk because it was taken by Creel, who is、um, basically similar to like、um, Metamorphous in that he, whatever, he can touch any type of、um, substance in his body, his entire body will turn into that substance. Okay. Long story short, a lot of stuff goes down in season two. Um, basically, we meet Bobby, who's been undercover、um, at Hydra, but she's actually a SHIELD agent. Her and Hunter used to be in a relationship.、Uh, I don't really think that's considered a spoiler.、Um, they're pretty much on again, off again,、um, pri- up until this point, anyway. And they try to infiltrate Hydra、um, because Hydra obviously is after the obelisk, because we find out that. Um, Whitehall, who was a member of Hydra, has, is actually now like he was in the very beginning of it. You see them where they're taking him away, and he's old, but now he has found the hashtag Fountain of Youth.、Um, and come to find out, he's actually done some really underhanded things in order to gain his youth again. Dun dun dun. And because of that, he wants the obelisk because he knows what it means. Right now, Agent of Shield doesn't know what it means. The people that are working with the Hydra, they just know they're being told to get the obelisk. But Whitehall knows what it means. Okay? Now, while this is going on, okay, while this is going on, we actually meet、um, Bakshi, which is. A number like maybe two or three in command at、uh, Hydra. And the reason why I'm bringing him up is because he kind of reminds me of like a Lotar from um <laughs> from uh Voltron. Voltron because dude is like 
five steps ahead. Five steps all ahead the time. all the time. all the time. Even when you don't believe that he is five steps ahead, even when you think you have him behind the eight ball, he comes out a winner. And that's going to play a role in some things that happen further on in the season as we go on. All right, so now as we get further on into the season, okay, they, Phil Coulson, going back to what happened with him in the Tahiti experiment, which we're not going to tell you about because that's a big spoiler, he's been doing all of these carvings, and it looks like alien writing, and eventually they figure out that it leads to a city, okay? The obelisk has to deal with the city because what happens with the obelisk is, the obelisk is another way for people who have the mute the not mutant gene the latent gene um for inhumans to actually come into their powers it actually sends them through the teragenesis process now i can speak in all these words now but at the time the agencies the members of agent shield don't know that's what it does again whitehall knows and we'll find out later on in the season why he knows um with that being said or whatever um they find the city, which is underneath San Juan. They go to the city. Um, oh, I have to bring up one key person that I didn't mention. Mm-hmm. Back in season one, we met a character known as the woman with the flower dress. Her name is Raina. Oh, She's yeah. the female Lothar, okay? She's always about that come up. She five, six steps ahead. Um... And all of that. So Raina comes there too because she feels that she has a connection with the Ibelis as well. So Sky and Raina and Trip or BJ actually get stuck in this room where the Ibelis is. And that's where season um, two, the A part, ends up. They actually go through the Terra Genesis process. When we come back, we figure out what happens to them. Um, Daisy, I'm sorry, Sky now <laughs> has <laughs> Sky now has um, powers and abilities, inhuman powers. Okay, Raina gets them. Bj does not get any, and so he's no longer with us. Let's have a moment of silence and R.I.P. for him. Okay, so. Now everybody's freaked out because they don't really know what's happened um, as far as what's going on. Um, So they're trying to basically suss everything out, okay? Um, Come to find out, even though Skye thought she was alone, she actually does have a father. He's on the search for her. Um, We also find out that... I forgot how that goes down. I think from Bakshi. We learn about um, Agent 33, who was a member that went missing earlier in Season 2, that she's actually alive and that they actually had brainwashed her, Hydra did, Mm -hmm. and um, she's actually out and about. And through Agent 33, we find about some other members, like Mike Peterson from Season 1, or a.k.a. um, Deathlock. And, um... We find out what's been going on in their life. And the reason why I'm mentioning that way is because I don't want to spoil it for you guys. All right. So after all is said and done, how things end up with this episode is the fact that we find out not only that Skye's father is alive, but also her mother is alive. Okay. In addition to that, they have an inhuman compound okay, where all the Inhumans on Earth have actually been staying. And her mom is the leader of that compound, okay? And because of some things that happened to her mom and how Whitehall used her because she has powers of rejuvenation, she actually now wants to basically turn everybody into an Inhuman. So they have to stop her mom. And season two leaves off with... um. Ooh, wow, yeah. Season two left off. Great. Season two left <laughs> off. Well, I forgot about Don't the monolith. Don't you you reflect back to how something ended. It was just like, oh, yeah, I love that. Because I forgot about the monolith. Yeah. So season two ends with Daisy having to deal, Sky having to deal with the fact that um, 
her, she had to get rid of her mom, her dad, and everything that he strives to do. Um, Fitzsimmons, um, ends up being transported somewhere and we don't know where she I mean Simmons yes. is transported somewhere we don't know where she's at mm-hmm. Colson has the ultimate gives the ultimate sacrifice so that everybody wouldn't get turned into an inhuman because um, they had these little crystals that you would see in inhumans if you watched it they, they were going to use to have everybody become inhuman However, the crystals end up falling out from the Quinjet that she was going to use to, like, blast the city. Yes. Which is kind of like Deadbolt, a part of Deadbolt's story. I'm going to get into that. So the crystals falls into the water, and then it merges with, like, the fish. The fish. And then they... <laughs> that becomes, like... Um, a part of the fish oils for the omega-3 vitamins that people... And they're going on the shelves. So it ends off with, like, what's going to happen for season three. Yeah, just It disaster. was an awesome season. Again, not trying to spoil a lot. That's why it's not as cohesive as it would be if we just talked about it with spoilers. But hands down, if you want to say up until um, season 2A, Asia of Shield was in... I'll give you that. But yes. when they came back from the whole from thing with them being locked in the mm-hmm. room and her going through Terra Genesis yes. on, it was awesome. awesome. Now, let me state for the record, okay, let me state for the record that she does get a love interest by the end of this season. His name is Lincoln. And she does realize her real name. She's no longer Sky, but her name is actually Daisy. So that's why I kept going back and forth with the name. So from... Now on, she's going to be known. Chloe Bennett's character is now known as Scott. I mean, Daisy. <laughs> now we'll do the other way around. All right, so we're going to leave you here. Um, thanks for tuning in. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Share this video. Tune in for season three. And as always, you guys, stay geeky.